wrong with the last episode and what I was going to do in that episode, but I promised you in this one that I'd get the strong back put together. So I cut the forms in the last episode on my CNC machine, and now they're ready to string on my aluminum strong back. The strong back is cut to about 13 feet long, but I need to get the forms lined up precisely. So the first step will be just determining where to locate the forms. So I've got the end form designed so it slides into the hollow tube of my aluminum extrusion. If you have a box beam, um, you often end up with a hollow piece in there. And so this is one I size specifically to slide inside my aluminum extrusion. So it's going to go someplace like this. What I need to figure out is exactly where this face is going to be. So this is form 28, which means it's 28 inches from the bow of the boat. But this form will end up butting up against the end form right there. And down at the other end, I've got a similar situation. Here I've got the stern end form, which will slide in like this. And this form is form 168. So that ends up going on here and butting up against this end of the form. So this is form 168, and at the other end, it's form 28. So the difference between this face and that face is 140 inches. So when I have this placed in here, I need to measure 140 inches up to this point on that bow form. So if I slide this stern form on here, I want to mark how far it comes forward here. So right there. And if I measure that, that is nine and three eighths inches from that point there. So now if I slide down to the other end, so I want to go 140 inches, but I'm measuring from the far end of the strong back, which was nine and, a, and three eighths. So we'll go 149 and three eighths right there. So when I insert this end form, I want to have that line up right there at 149 and 3 eighths. So it's a matter of securing this end form in place at that position. But before I do that, I want to get the other form strung on. So now I've just placed these uh, forms on the strong back. I'm not locating them yet. My initial concern is just getting the bow form in place where it needs to be. So it'll be right in there. I have this big wide opening in, in here um, that there's nothing really to hold this form centered. So I have these two spacers that are sized to fit down into the extrusion on either side. And if I place the form in between them, the form will be centered. So now it's just a matter of getting this to the right length here, right there, and shooting in a screw to hold it in place. So now that's not going anywhere. So at this end, string on the forms. Notice I'm putting them with the reference lines pointed towards the closest end. I, I took about half the forms on this end, stringing them on here, and on the other end, it's the other half of the forms. The end they're closest to is the side I place the reference lines on. So it's always going to be towards the closest end. Because I put this uh, scarf cut in order to get two 13-foot strong backs out of one 20-foot extrusion, I have a big open slot down here. So like the front of the bow form, this needs to be dealt with. So I put these spacers in there. And the end form just slides down in there. Locks in place. And as long as I have this registered against the top surface, we'll be good. So once again, I just double check that this is lined up precisely with my mark and shoot in a screw. 
So now if I slide this form down here, it's not going to slide off. It has no place to go. The, the end forms are being held in with two screws each. So these are the only fasteners holding the old, whole system together, is these two to just make sure the end form doesn't slide off the end. So this is form 28, this is form 168, and so again those are measurement distances from the bow of the finished boat, and I want 140 inches between this face of form 168 and this face of form 28. And now I want 10 inches between each form. So I'm using a 10 inch form spacing here. Um, it's sort of typical for my designs is 12 inches, but I find when I'm using thinner strips that a little tighter form spacing works out nicely. And since I have the CNC machine and can pump them out, I don't mind making a few extra forms. Seems to be worthwhile for me. Um, I want to get 10 inches between reference faces. So the reference face is this front face at the bow of the boat. And the reference face at the stern of the boat is the back of the face. Again, I'm going from form 28 there to form 168 here. And then the, each one in between, I want 10 inches from reference face to reference face. Since these are half inch thick forms, the spacing between the forms should be nine and a half inches. So I've got spacers here that are nine and a half inches. So I just drop that in between. Get more spacers. And between each form, there's one spacer. Same at the other end. So now I've got spacers between each one of them. All these spacers are is a couple pieces of plywood. Again, CNC machine, so I cut these myself on my CNC machine. But I've made them out of plywood and pine. Whatever it takes is just something that nestles over the strong back, holds it in place. So if I make them out of plywood by hand without the CNC machine, I'll rabbit a piece of pine, eight foot piece of pine, I have some eight foot long plywood pieces, rabbit the plywood into the pine, glue and put a couple brads into that to hold it together, and then on a chop saw, cut them off to the appropriate length. In my case, this is nine and a half inches for a typical spacing of uh, 12 inches between forms, you'd have 11 and a half inches. But on a chop saw, you can make these all nice and square. So this is just the size it needs to be to fit over the strong back so it doesn't fall off. The length here is the spacing between forms. Um, and what we care about is that these are square. These ends are square in both directions. That way the forms will be square. So there's not much to these. Very simple. So the gap for the last spacer, I have these modified spacers. They've got a little angle cut on them, so when I drive a wedge in there, it pushes the forms out either direction. So just drop that in, grab a wedge and a mallet, and drive that wedge down. Now the forms are very secure, not going anywhere. Before the wedges are in, everything's loose. Start to drive the wedges in. That all tightens up. With it all wedged together, things are pretty secure. And chances are good that the forms are now secure. But we just want to make sure everything's aligned. Yeah. The forms can rotate around the axis of the strong back. So we just want to double check and make sure the forms are all secure. And that's why we put the reference lines on, and that's why we had them point towards the closest ends so they're easy to see as we sight down the length of the boat. So here we have the reference lines. These happen to be water lines, um, so they're horizontal lines parallel to where the water plane will be. This is a design water line for where the boat will float when it has a typical size passenger in it. And this is where it's going to be the part line of the boat. Um, for this particular design, it doesn't have a, a typical shear like most kayaks. Um, 
So this line is a horizontal line across all the forms, which ends up being at the widest point of the forms at the middle of the boat. Towards the end, the widest point ramps up at the bow and down at the stern. And so this will just serve as a reference line, as a part line between the hull and the deck of the boat. We want to make sure all these reference lines line up precisely. To that end, you need to get your eye up on the plane of that reference line. If it's low, things don't line up. And if it's high, things don't line up. But you get it right on the line there, and things will line up precisely, in theory. That's what we're here to make sure that they actually do. So I'm going to get the boat a little closer to the camera here. And so we are going from here, eyeballing out to there, make sure everything's straight and true. If we have one that looks a little high, a little bit low, we're just going to take and tap down on the forms. If that doesn't do it, we can try tapping up on the other side. If we have one that looks a little bit low, we can tap up from below, get it lined up. So this is an exercise in getting your eye right down on the plane of the water lines and sighting down it to try and see any discrepancies where something's high or low. If you're if your eye's not on the plane, you're not going to be able to see it. You can't do it standing back. You need to get your eye right down close to everything and sight precisely down that line. So we have a transition point here. Here the reference face is on the front of the boat, the closest ends the bow. And here on the other side of where the wedges are, the reference face is now at, towards the back. And so I have all the reference lines here on the front where they're vis visible from the front and on here where they're visible from the back. So obviously there's a transition here where you can't see the reference lines from this side and sight past it to the reference lines on this side. So we need to have some sort of way of transitioning that, that um, reference. So I've got a little strip of wood here. I'll just place that along that reference lines. In this case, I've got a, a groove there. So it's on the top edge of that reference groove. Clamp it in place, align it with the top edge, and same on these, on the stern half. So now we've got, we've established a set of lines that we can eyeball across that transition. And again, I want to get my eye right down here on that reference plane and scan back and forth so I can sort of connect the dots. Here I can see these two are lined up and as I move out I can watch that reference plane cross through each form. And you can't do it if you're standing back. You can't see it from here. You want to get your eyeball right on that line so you can sight down that curve. It, in this case it should be a perfectly flat plane all the way down and so if you look at one and get the top edge lined up and then look at the next, it should line up with the next and that one should line up with the next and the next and the next. And so it just transitions all the way down in one nice straight flat plane. And if something looks a little bit off, give it a little tap. Once you've got it lined up in this plane, we want to go and look down the center line and do the same process sighting down the center line. The process is the same for the center line. Get your eye right, right on the plane of the center line and scan down the forms looking from one to the next. So again, you really want your eye right on that plane looking straight down the line from one form to the next. If you see something that looks a little bit out of whack, you can try rotating the form a little bit. If you're having trouble with some of this, it may be a bit of an iterative process. Starting at the water line on one side, maybe going to the water line on the other side, back to the center line, back to the first water line, and you also you can flip it over. 
Um, right now, the strong back's not secured to anything. The whole deal can be lifted up and flipped over, and you can look at the bottom center line. And by rotating it a few times, you ought to be able to find things that are out of whack. By rotating it a few times, you ought to be able to find any form that's out of whack. And usually, it's just a matter of it's rotated on the strong back somehow. It's not inconceivable that you cut the hole wrong, and so the hole's not in the center of the form, in which case you might need to take the whole deal apart. But chances are, if you're careful cutting your forms, everything will be good, and it's just a matter of getting the rotation right. Once you're satisfied that everything's as straight as you can make it, um, we'll just put a couple more wax on the wedges to make sure it's even tighter, and that should hold it secure. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of hot melt glue on the wedges to just keep them from moving, but uh, I really haven't had a problem with them moving. As far as how straight does it need to be, the strips to a certain extent will fare themselves out. So if something's a little bit off, you know, a sixteenth of an inch, a millimeter, something like that, chances are that's not going to end up showing. Um, if you get things a little bit off, the boat's still going to work. You know, I have people worried about that their boat's going to go around circles or something. That's, I'd be surprised if anybody could actually make a boat that's going to go around circles because they didn't get their forms quite true enough. You know, if it's off, even if it was off by half an inch, you know, like a centimeter from one end to the other, it had a bow in it, the radius of that circle is miles. It's not going to actually mess you up much and you might get to the point where near the completion of the boat where you look down and all you can see is the fact that it's crooked nobody else is ever going to know you're not going to end up going in circles it's really not going to affect the performance that much obviously you want to do as good a job as you can in the long run you'll just be more satisfied with it but don't live in fear that somehow if you've got something off by a 64th of an inch, things are going to be bad. It's not going to be bad. It's going to be fine. You know, you can be off by a 16th easily enough. It's not going to really affect anything. Eighth inch, you know, not ideal, but it'll still be fine. You know, you probably don't want to be off by a half inch, but you're going to be able to catch that before um, there's any problem. And if you have a strong back that you feel isn't stiff enough um, and seems to move while you're working on it, get it lined up as straight as you can and maybe put some more sawhorses to lock it in place a little bit. Um, once you get two or three strips on either side, stop, check everything again. If you see something out of whack, make some adjustments. Once you've got a few strips on it, the strips are going to lock it all in place and things aren't going to move after that. You pump some staples into it, nothing's going to move. And so don't worry that you don't have a aluminum strong back that's really rigid. If your um, wood box beam has a little bit of flex to it, just make sure when you're started it's as straight as you can get it. And again, if it's a little bit bowed one way or the other. Don't sweat it too much. I didn't lie to you this time. I got the forms assembled on the strong back. I have more I want to discuss and show you, but this episode's long enough. In the next segment, I'll discuss why I use an internal strong back as opposed to the external, then demonstrate the shaping of the inner stems. Be sure to hit subscribe because these segments should keep coming quickly at this point. I can't promise one every day, but there should be several a week. Turn on notifications to be informed of each new video. I'm moving along quickly here and would appreciate your comments and feedback as I go. Let me know if you have any questions. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy paddling!